Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Wednesday, August 21st, 2024. I hope you're safe and healthy on this Wednesday. I hope your family's safe and healthy and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field, along with the first responders who every day are out here trying their best to save lives. Blessings also upon those that pick up garbage to keep our places clean. And blessings again on those that make deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings on the men and women that are here trying to help rescue, deliver, and recover. Teenagers and children that are victims of child molestation and pedophilia. People that are also victims of pornography. Child pornography. Prostitution. Child prostitution. Human trafficking. And sex slavery. Double curses on the perpetrators. The profiteers. And the perverts that create demands on these heinous industries. Finally, double blessings on the homeless. More than 600,000 men, women, children, families, veterans, senior citizens living on the streets in cars and vans and benches in the United States of America. And many around the world in similar or even worse conditions and blessings upon them. For theirs is the kingdom. Today, I wanted to discuss it. McCall Bridges. You know, when the Knicks got McCall Bridges and they paid five first rounders, not all, you know, unprotected, but anyway, a lot of people who, you know, it's always unwise to speak before you think. We've all done it at different phases uh, of, of life. We've spoken before we've actually thought about what we're going to say, which is why sometimes we say things that sound stupid, are stupid, or things we wish we could take back. In sports, and particularly in Knicks Nation, this is a plague. It's not just something that happens every once in a while. Unfortunately, it's a plague. People start to react and th- and, and speak and, and put things on Twitter before they even had a chance to actually think. So they're doing it on emotion. And this was the case with Kyle, with McCall Bridges. I had, about a year ago, more than a year ago, I was um, advocating for the Knicks to get him. And in fact, when everybody was looking at all these different trades and all these different players, I said there was only one exception that the Knicks would trade for. It was McCall Bridges. Even after they got OG, going into this offseason, I was saying the only one player that they would need to get with McCall Bridges, and people didn't understand because some, you know, really don't follow NBA close enough to know who McCall Bridges was. And then when they gave the five first-round picks up for him, we had people tripping. He ain't worth all that, because they were reacting before they had a chance to actually think. So I propose that you and Knicks Nation ask yourselves two questions. The first question, I would like you to ask yourself if if the Knicks win an NBA championship in 24-25, was the five first round picks worth it? Question one. So if because of the acquisition of McCall Bridges, they win the championship, was the five first round picks worth it? And then second is if they don't win the championship, but they get they win the Eastern Conference. Was the five first round picks worth it? Let me ask you for my let me answer from my perspective. Yes, in both cases. So therefore, we should stop whining about the five first round picks. Now, why is McCall Bridge worth it? Okay, I like to bring up both McCall Bridges and Dante Divincenzo because when we first got McCall, we I had some people coming to my chance that McCall should come off the bench again, speaking. Reacting before you actually think about it. Listen, Dante, let me, overall, let me just tell you, and I'm going to show it to you. I'm on basketball reference right here, and I got McCall Bridges up, and I got Dante DiVincenzo up. First of all, Dante DiVincenzo is a very good player. He's a, he's a pro. First of all, he's in the league, but he's very good. And he... I would describe him as McCall Bridges Light. That's Dante. And that's really good. But 
he's not Macaw. Okay, let me go into Macaw for a second. Well, first let's go into Dante. Dante has played seven seasons in the NBA. He's 27 years old. Last year, he played in 81 games, so he's available. He started 63 because we know they traded Grimes, right? So he started 63. He played 81 games. He averaged 29 minutes a game. He got 12 shots a game, averaged 16 points on 44% shooting from the field, 40% from three, and 75 from the line. Those are terrific numbers, aren't they? Okay, that's terrific numbers. So 16 a game, 12 shots he gets a game. He averaged 40% from three, right? 44% from the field, and again, 75% from the line. Terrific numbers. And by the way, all of those were career highs. Because now Dante's in his prime. So those career highs. For his career, he's averaging 43% from the field, 38% from three. Fantastic, right? And he's averaging 77% from the line, which is even better than he did last year. And about 11 points a game. That, my friends, is perfection for your bench. He started last year, and as we see, he tremendous. Set the net record for three-pointers. But let's look at McCall Bridges. McCall Bridges, for his career, is a 48% from the field, 38% from three, and 85% from the line. In fact, McCall has flirted with 40, 50, 90 numbers several times in his career. And I believe he's probably going to get that with the New York Knicks. What's amazing is he's already in 21, I think it was 2021. Let me just double check that. Yes, 21-22, he was first team All-NBA defense. Okay? McCall Bridges plays about 82 games a year. McCall Bridges last year, well, the year before last, when he was in Phoenix, his last year in Phoenix, his last year in Phoenix, okay, that would have been his last year in Phoenix. Well, he played half a year, but let's go back to 21-22. His last year in Phoenix, that's when he was all NBA defense. He played 82 games. He shot 53% from the field. He shot 37% from three, and he shot 83% from the line, okay? Last year in Phoenix. Then he was traded in the middle of his Last year, that was his last full season. 22-23 is traded the trade deadline to Brooklyn, and he played 56 game in Phoenix. He uh, he shot 46 percent from the field, 39 percent from three, and he shot 90 percent from the line. Average 17 a game. Then he goes to Brooklyn. Well, when he was in Phoenix, he was the third option. Okay, he was the third option in Phoenix. So he goes to Brooklyn and he becomes the first or second option. So he's got to take more shots. So you would expect that he's going to be less efficient. Because you know what? It's very difficult to be a two-way player in the NBA. That is, that is in itself a high-level sought-after skill. Most guys specialize on one side of the floor and on the other side they save their energy. Defensive players save their energy on the offensive end. Offensive pl players, like Julius used to do, save his energy on the defensive end. And like actually Brunson still does. Okay, So they save their energy because most of their talent is on the offensive end of the floor. But then there are guys that are two-way, legit two-way players like McCall Bridges. So he goes to the Nets. And now he was taking 14 shots a game. Now he's taking 19 shots a game. We expect his efficiency to go down, but no, no. He shoots 48% from the field. He shoots 38% from three on seven attempts. And then he shoots 89% from the line. And he averages 26 a game while still playing lockdown defense on the other team's best player. You know how rare that is? Not many players in the history of the league could do that. Okay, I'm not saying he's Michael Jordan, but you're talking about Michael Jordan when you're talking about two-way players, all NBA defense and, and unstoppable offensively. Well, McCall's not exactly unstoppable, but shoot, 26 points a game, ain't nothing to sneeze at. Then last year, all 82 games he plays, 44%, he shoots 16 shots a game, 44% from the field, 37% from three, again, 81% from the line, and he averages 20 a game. So now, you see the difference. He's a legit two-way starter. And they ain't, I'm not sneezing on the Vincenzo, but Vincenzo's natural spot is the second unit. 
McCall's natural spot, according to what we're looking at, is the first unit. Then, McCall again is going to be a third option. It's going to be Brunson, Juju, and then McCall. And then you got OG as the fourth option. It is very possible. It is extremely possible. I won't predict it. But I'm going to tell you, I, I would say it's at least 70% possible that he's a 40, 50, 90 guy this year. Can you imagine? You got a defensive stopper, a guy that's all NBA level defense at your two guard spot that can hit 40, 50, 90. And y'all don't think he's worth five first rounders? Why? Because he's not a superstar? You want to win a championship or don't you? Then you take a Dante DiVincenzo who broke the Nick record for threes while playing defense, unlike the Frenchie. And you got him with defensive stopper Deuce and all rebounding fool Josh Hart with Mitch Rob coming off your bench. No, no, not Mitch Rob, sorry. Precious. Okay, Precious. The second coming of Taj Gibson at age 25. Coming off your bench. Y'all don't understand why they paid five first rounders for him? Is the championship worth it or not? See, people would have paid five first rounders for Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant ain't won nothing since he played with Stephen Curry, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green. He ain't won nothing since then. And y'all would have paid five first rounders for him. Or for Kyrie Irving, who ain't won nothing since he played with LeBron. But McCall Bridges, you're tripping. Let me tell you something. In getting five first rounds from McCall, the, the Knicks not only already went from future in terms of development when they traded our guys, you know, IQ and, and, and uh, Rowan, they went to win now. But now, <laughs> they, just, they went to championship now. That's what they just did. And the thing is, if OG was to miss more than the 22 games we kind of expect him to miss, the 17 to 22 games we kind of expect him to miss, that's good. That's no problem. Because you could bring Dante DiVincenzo off your bench. And you could put McCall right there at the three if you needed to. And you ain't skipping a beat. McCall Bridges is what they call that final piece. Macaw Bridges is what they call the straw that broke the camel's back. Macaw Bridges is what they call that championship piece. And yes, he's worth five first rounders. So all y'all on Twitter need to ch calm the F down. And, and we gonna, man, it's scary. I'm going to tell you, what's making me nervous is this is just too good to be true. Really, that's what's making me nervous. Because last summer, if y'all recall, I advocated for one or the other only because I didn't think we can get both. I advocated, okay, either OG or McCall. When we got OG, I was like, okay, we set now. But then the Dom messed around and had the nerve to go get McCall Bridges. McCall Bridges, that's a 40, 50, 90 guy waiting to happen and could lock up, lock up anybody in the league. See, when we play Minnesota, and I'm going to be at that game, Ant is going to have a problem because he's going to have Makai on him. He might get OG on him. And then don't let Tibbs open up that door from his bench and let that dog deuce out. We be in good shape, y'all. That's what I'm saying. We play the Celtics. Oh, the Celtics. <gasps> A cow can guard either Tatum or Brown, and the other one, OG, can lock down. Oh, wait, they got Derek White. Deuce, where you at? What about Christoph Porzingis? Mitch Rob? We ain't worried about y'all. And don't tell you know, I respect our Horford. I really do. But you think he can guard Juju with all that? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. And we all should be. We got something, New York. 
and forget the five first round picks. <laughs> we would, the Don was setting it up from year one to get to the point where he needed when he needed to pull that trigger, he had the stash. And he ain't give away everything either. We still got first round picks. After he gave away five. After he, I shouldn't say gave away. After he invested five to get championship piece. We still got first round picks. Matter of fact, we got so much, we ain't really even need a first round pick this year. He took this kid that was 18 years old. That ain't going to be ready for three years. Four years. Because we can afford to do that. Because you know why? We got it like that. You all enjoy your Wednesday. So.